Hi everyone, welcome back. Before I get started, I also want to tell you that uh, we so appreciate your comments and your questions, and uh, there's so many that we've decided that we're going to do an episode just answering questions. So stay tuned for that. I'll remind you that if you like what you see, please subscribe. And uh, we're, we're doing our darndest to try and come up with content that will continue to inspire and interest you. You know, Gautier is a really fabulous personality. Gautier has been in the fashion world for 50 years now, and he started as a, as a child, actually. He started with illustrations, and his favorite companion was a teddy bear. Uh, his grandmother was a person that inspired him, and interestingly enough, the story goes that his famous cone uh, Madonna outfit was something that was inspired and done on his teddy bear. Gautier had a gift of sketching, and he submitted a lot of his fashion sketches to couturiers in Paris at the time. This is in the late 60s, early 70s. And he actually caught the eye of Pierre Cardin and I believe Jean Patou as well. But he got hired by Cardin. Gautier really had a desire to be a little bit more bold. And so his alliance with Cardin and his working for Cardin really gave him insight into a balance between theatricality and what would be accepted. Uh, and not pushing the bar a little bit too far. I, I want to read something that was uh, taken from a book uh, that after Cardin, Gautier went on to work with Jacques Estorel, and he's another designer who was considered avant-garde. Estorel created a kilt suit for men in 1966. So talk about avant-garde. And a vinyl pantsuit for women. This designer's vision liberated Gautier's creativity even more as his designs in the 80s and 90s reference androgynous dressing and utilizing synthetic fabrics. So, you know, life experience is a culmination of things that as a designer and as an artist can really impact you, maybe not immediately, but down the road. In, in many ways, you think of um, travels, seeing things. And what I love about Gautier is he'll take something that is so common, like um, a pet food can uh, that he opened both sides of and realized that what was left was reminiscent of an African bracelet. And from that, he took it and ran. Or, traveling to parts of, let's say, Nepal and India and seeing how the women dressed there and infusing that into his collections either uh, immediately or later on. This is why in our business, in my business in particular, we get a lot of designers that come in looking for inspiration for their next collections. You see something and you tweak it and you make it your own. And uh, Gautier was a genius at doing that. I'm going to start with the two pieces on the mannequin. This particular piece is really one that I love. It's, a, it's like a cashmere blend with a taffeta skirt and body. What this reminds me of is a mess <coughs> messenger bag. And uh, it has grommets um, along the hemline, which allows you to hook it at different places so that you can actually play with the, the hem and the silhouette. What I really love about this piece is he is mixing two fabrics that most people don't really consider working together. And he's created a design and a silhouette that allows the wearer to really make it their own because there's so many options with the grommets. Uh, with the length of the sleeves, with the length of the, the body. Now the label on this is Jean-Paul Gaultier Femme, made in Italy. I do want to mention also that I believe it was in 2011, there was an incredible exhibition, the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts in 2011, in collaboration with Gaultier, organized a retrospective exhibit. It was at the Diang Museum in San Francisco. I flew up specifically to see it. I can't believe that was nine years ago. And 
it blew my socks off because, you know, being more familiar with his Pret-a-Porter, which I love and adore, but to see his couture work just raise the bar to the very top of people who I admire as designers. In his experience with Cardin and learning about licensing, he has so many different labels and so many different collections. I have examples of a few of them, um, but my favorite is the Femme because it's the top tier of the Pret-a-Porter. This wonderful suede dress, I've had two versions of this, is um, all about zippers and all about opening the zippers to a certain point to create a different silhouette once again. So you can see that if you open this, it lowers the hem and it gives more room in the booty, if that's the proper terminology. It's this beautiful soft suede with uh, asymmetrical hem. So it has kind of a bohemian boho feel to it, but it also has a very Western feel to it. These two pieces are my favorite goatees that we have right now. I should mention, most of the items that we show, even though I call them part of my collection, uh, it's, I guess it's a form of my being possessive, but these things are available for purchase. So if you see something you're curious about, just c make a comment and we can get back to you and let you know about size and price. Okay, along the lines of the Gautier Femme is this kind of monastic, it's a heavy satin, uh, striped satin, zippered cuff. And speaking of accessories, we happen to have a Gautier laser cut leather necklace with matching earrings. So the earrings are taped together, but you get the picture. So you can totally change the look of this with what you choose to accessorize it with. Also in the Gautier Femme line is this sheer crepe dress decorated with buttons. And the buttons create a faux kind of cap sleeve when you wear it. And I guess you can really play with this as well, like maybe wrap it around your waist. But you see how in almost every example, you have options to change the way it looks. And then we have separates, which we'll do in a second. But I wanted to show you this Gautier Classique piece. Once again, it has a monastic feel to it with these fabulous, dramatic um, bell sleeves lined in an iridescent taffeta. And it's, a, it's either a cotton knit or a cotton blend wool knit. Classic. I mean, this is something you can literally wear for the rest of your life. Now, I love this one. This is a, a wonderful weighted crepe straight leg pant with a tie at the bottom. Uh, flattering cut, uh, two back pockets, and uh, you can see with some of the tops that I'm going to show you in a second, um, he, ma he does make pieces that can mix and match. Um, one of my favorites, this is a tattoo, Faces of the World. Never been worn, so the mesh is in, intact. And uh, these images are pretty haunting. And along the same lines, the surreal face, which is mixed medium. It's threads that are stitched with words that I can't read. And the eye and the mouth are applique on. And once again, never been worn, so the, the mesh is intact. Now, this is getting into kind of a signature of Gautier. He did a lot of nautical-inspired designs. There's a, a blurring of the line uh, of gender when you get into this kind of silhouette. 
and um, this one is mixed medium. It's linen and a stretch fabric. Um, but there are more stronger examples, like this jacket, which has a strategically cut out um, peekaboo zones. And the lining has the nautical stripe. And then, of course, the modern interpretation of sailor pants with the button fly, the, fl the drop-down flap, and the lace-up back. Uh, this will be a silhouette that will be utilized forever because it's flattering, it's classic. Um, and last but not least, I don't remember what year Gautier collaborated with Target. Oh, mon Dieu. And uh, came up with um, pieces. I managed to get this stripe top with this wonderful kind of seersucker taffeta full. And you can see the label says Jean-Paul Gautier for Target. Over a 50-year career, there's a lot to cover. To me, the humanity of Gautier is one of the most important factors. His touching on subjects that at the time were somewhat controversial um, and now are much more mainstream and accepted. You know, it, it's people like him that help open people's hearts to differences in people. So I applaud him for that. Um, I want to mention that he started his personal career in 1976. Within five years, he was known for his irreverence and style. And um, some people call his fashion style uh, decadent, but I would say, you know, and that ended up having him be tagged as the l'enfant terrible. My French is horrible. Um, but three major design components of Gautier are number one, sex, number two, mixing um, ethnic things with uh, contemporary fashions to create a whole new look. And the third thing is Paris. He's very uh, Parisian-centric. Um, his collections have been f based on uh, popular culture, but in 1985 he introduced man skirts and promoted their use. So that clearly was um, because of his time with Jacques Estrel. The advent of his haute couture line, he is a, me a member of the Chambre Syndicale de la Haute Couture, uh, brought him incredible success. I believe that was around 1997. Um, and through his couture collection, he was able to really freely express his artistic um, range. Gautier was known for working with huge personalities, rock stars, models, uh, movie uh, directors, doing costumes for several films. He also designed for Hermes from 2003 to 2010, taking over when Margiela retired from that position. Uh, he was the creative director of Hermes. Gautier caused um, shock by using unconventional models um, for his exhibitions, like older models, full-figured women, um, pierced and heavily tattooed people, and playing with traditional gender roles. His message with the last runway show was, the best is ahead, and he also said, hello, brand new but he's not revealing what is in store. Um, he also stated, there are too many clothes. Do not throw them away. Recycle them. Call the dressmaker. Goodbye, the brand new. Hello, the brand new. He said on Instagram, quote, but rest assured, Hokutul will, will continue with a new concept, unquote. So we have an iconic designer who has retired from the runway,
who has something new up his sleeve. His final show was about recycling. And um, hopefully people will get the message. Gautier is a great inspiration for any up coming up and coming designer because he would take whatever he saw that talked to him and create his own version of it. Take a little bit from here. It's like a buffet of the world. And his inspiration touched not only, you know, people who were looking to dress in their own way, but also major designers like Martin Margiela, who worked with him for a couple of years, and uh, Nicolas Chassier. So his impact is unseen in that way, but know that his um, creativity, his wisdom, his kindness, his generosity, and his openness to all people, uh, regardless of the choices that they've made in life, uh, is something that, thank God, is reverberating throughout the world now. So in closing, before we do our show off, um, I want to remind you that you can subscribe to this channel, and we would love it if you did. I also want to remind you that we have some really exciting episodes coming up. Uh, one of the first is where we answer all the questions or uh, address the comments that you've put on uh, YouTube. We will be back in a second with our show off for the week. So keeping in line with this episode on Gautier, the thought was, well, what are we going to show in the show off? And I thought one of the great things to show is an actual bullet bra, I call them torpedo bras, from the 50s, 60s. Uh, we'll take photographs because to look at how this thing is constructed is pretty fabulous. I've actually spoken to lingerie designers that have told me that the concentric circle stitching to create this cone um, is not something that's easy and that most designers, lingerie designers, stay away from it because it's too complicated. But uh, it kind of stands out on its own. It's great. And then the other thing is this really unusual long uh, corset. I've been told that it is um, dominatrix and I haven't done any research into it, but you can see where many designers have been inspired by this kind of silhouette. So it, it restricts, um, you'd have to walk uh, like you're bound. Um, but I've never put it on, so I can't testify that that's what happens. You see how lingerie inspires clothing in general, and Underwear becomes outerwear, uh, and uh, that's been the case for many, many years now. I do want to point out one thing that most people are not familiar with, and that is you don't pull the corset from the top or the bottom. Correctly, there should be a loop in the middle right around the waist, and that's what you pull to tighten it. So, um, and I learned that from a gentleman in England who actually made corsets. So that's it for this week. We appreciate your interest and your positivity, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.